Alright guys, so uh, we're back. It's a different day, of course. I have a few things to share with you. We got some pretty good stuff coming up. The tires and wheels are done for the E39. I'm not sure if I'll attach it to this video or what. Probably make a separate video about that. Uh, maybe that and control arms. Anyhow, the E60 is in the shop. We need to do a couple things to it real quick. And we had some crisis about the vanyl solenoids. You look around and there's two options here in the States. You have Chinese vinyl solenoids, which is about 30, 40 bucks for a pair of them, or you have OEM, which is like 350 to 400. And um, so the 350, 400, I didn't want to do that. This car's already got way too much money in it. Put the Chinese ones in it, they're junk. I mean, they, they work okay. The car runs and drives. It doesn't advance the timing smoothly. The cold start's terrible on it. The OEM solenoids they have before, you clean them all you want, but that's not a tip, that's not a permanent fix. You'll constantly clean those things. So, what I have here, I was talking to Dean on the phone. He's like, man, I got just what you need. I have some OEM vanil solenoids, which they are OEM. And I had some extra ones, they're brand new. If you want them, I'll send them to you. And, you know, to be honest with you, I was thinking, there's gonna be like weeks. Let me set these right there, maybe. And he actually got, he sent me a, a PCV also for N52. So it has the built in heaters in it. Um, so we'll throw that on the shelf. We'll probably use that sooner or later. And anyhow, I was getting sidetracked. He sent these UPS and he told me, he's like, this is yesterday morning and he's in England. And I'm not. I'm in, I'm in Missouri and he's like man I'll send them overnight I'll overnight them to you well as you know in the states if you want to overnight anything even if it's down the road it's like hundreds of dollars for anything so he sends me the the label he printed and he paid it was like 44 or 45 bucks to send these overnight to me and they made it I don't think it's even a whole 20... I think it was exactly 24 hours. They were sending, sitting at my front door. UPS dropped them off. And I explained to him, if I sent those back... If I sent something to him from the States there, it'd be, one, a week or a week and a half. Two, 150, 200 bucks for a package that weighed a pound and a half. Uh, two pounds. So, you know, it's just kind of the way it goes. Anyhow. We're going to pop these things in real quick. Won't take but just a second. We'll take our wrong cover off here. Oh, I need two hands. I'll put you on the post here. So, yeah, I was real pleased with that. Um, he does have access being over there a lot closer to Germany <clears throat> to a lot more BMW parts. He needs something really hard to find. Um, that's always an option. Ten millimeter action going on a quarter inch drive. We like to use on these. Is that right there? Ten mil quarter inch drive. What we're gonna do is things that replace these. We're gonna get the laptop out. We're gonna get it's the D out, and we're going to um, recalibrate the car for these. And it was starting to learn the Chinese sensors a little more, but they still, no matter what, would not advance right. And uh, it's still, on cold start, the idle will still go up and down. I was actually going to show you here. So I'll drip all the damn floor. If you can see it, this one is actually actually cracked all the way across the top of that. And it's all loose. <laughs> well, that's the Chinese sensors. So apparently, I always make fun of the Chinese plastic. Everything you get from China is made out of the chintziest plastic you've ever seen. And when I get MREs for the MRE channel, the plastic on the MRE is made out of that 
crackly, cheap plastic. So apparently it didn't stop at that. Uh, make sure the oil ring's not stuck in there. Done with that. Flip that back up. These things here. Let me put those over on the parts for so if they leak, it's not a big deal. Okay, I'll put that away. Okay, so I'll show you guys just a little bit here of Issa D and why this is. Issa D is not too bad to use, but if you're using different programs, you constantly have to have different programs to lock the icon of that program. There's a lot to it. So at this point, we're in basically scan the vehicle. We're in vehicle management. We're in engine uh, electronics. We're down here to variable camshaft control. And now we're to three different options. Variable camshaft, Vanos, removing, installing, replacing intake and exhaust camshaft adjusters, removing, installing, replacing both solenoid valves. So we did the solenoid valves. Double click it. So it should just kind of walk you through it if I'm in the right spot here. Whoops. Uh, let me see. Rough running, OBD, faulty entry, mission is all its characteristics, low engine power. We have all of them. Okay, so it shows you how to do it all. I don't know. Tightening sequence. I don't think we're in the right spot here. It's showing you how to do it. We already did it. We already know how to do it. This is for the timing to actually remove the vanos themselves. We don't need to do that. So we're still not in the right spot, but it shows you how to do all the all the timing and all that stuff. So let's back up out of this. And see what I mean? It's like it's not what you think it is. Oh, we weren't in the engine electrical, so let's but we're in the right spot, so let's see here. <laughs> yeah, see, it's, your average person is not going to be able to use this. You have to know what everything's called exactly. And I'm a very fluent car guy, but this stuff's called what I'm not used to being called. It's very difficult to operate. And, you know, I mean, that's where we're at with it. Are we even in the right spot at all? Let's just click on this, see what this even is. That's all torque specs. I mean, it does tell you a lot, but they did go extremely out of their way to make it difficult to use. And that's all the options given us in here. So it must not be in the right section. Let's just search Vanos and see make some kind of heads or tails out of this operation if you use it every day it's probably easy but okay so <clears throat> I think we found it here we're in uh, let me see where are we at here vehicle management service functions and then we're down to engine electronics and we're down to learning valve tronic limit positions over here we're gonna double click that let's go open that up what I've figured out, I can't get a hold of Dean. This, is, this should be right. Uh, it's going to relearn the timing, the maximum and minimum for those solenoids to run. So here it says, after every repair, variable valve timing stop. Of the the stops of the adjustment mechanism must be relearned to minimum, maximum, and lift level. During a learned procedure, the centric shaft will slowly turn to minimum lift direction until mechanical resistance is felt. The position of the mechanical stop is then stored. The same procedure is carried out for the maximum valve lift stop. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. And then it says, switch off terminal 15 and terminal R. Wait until digital motor electronics main relay is deactivated. Switch on terminal 15. Terminal 15 is the addition, if you didn't know.
I think I heard it run. So I'll switch it back on. Okay, so continue. The stops are learned in the next step. Continue. You can hear them running. Make sure you're catching the shot here. All right, limited position is definitely learnt, successfully learned. To end test module, press right arrow button. I guess continue. A fault code 2A46 is entered. Fault code memory. Service function finished. Okay. Let's go back up here to operations. Display fault memory and a lot of this is so I'm gonna go ahead and reset it. I don't know if it, that's what it's asking you to do or not. Let's go ahead and do that. Delete fault memory. Let's see what comes back. As once you do anything to one of these cars, it throws fault codes with the software. You have to go and reset it after you do something. I learned that pretty quickly. So let's see here. Let's initiate. Remove the key or mode for the file of present. And it's probably gonna want the car to go into sleep before you put that back in. Yep. So I get the key out, keys in my hand. Start the key. Uh, turn on the addition. And all that automatically senses that. Our RDC is red because we coded it off. Well, it wasn't there, so we coded it off. <laughs> Be clear with that. So we have an error in the IHKA. We had that before, so we'll see once here what that is. So slow, come on. And that's with the ICOM. You're doing with the cable. Good luck. I'll just go ahead and hit display fault memory. Okay, so the fogging sensor, I'm not sure what that even is, but uh, that doesn't matter. So there it is, guys. I mean, it's one of those deals, it's quite the pain in the butt. Um, we'll probably post this video separately all by itself. I'll cut and chop it up in editing, make it watchable, put a little music on it maybe. And this thing is going out right now. E39 is coming in. See you later.